The cabin is removable, allowing the chassis to carry payloads or be driven by astronauts in spacesuits. Also representing NASA in the parade will be the STS-126 Space Shuttle crew commanded by Chris Ferguson, International Space Station Expedition 17 and 18 Flight Engineer Greg Shamatoff, Apollo Astronaut Buzz Aldrin, and a delegation of NASA employees. For more information, visit www.nasa.gov.
of the vehicle very quickly. So she's just open up the inner hatch and the back hatch of the suit, and uh, we have these little ottomans that help you get up to the level of the back hatch. And you can see her step into the suit now. This suit's actually a little big for her, but uh, better to too big than too small, I guess. So she's already in the suit, you know, we're looking at about 30 seconds. And then with these mechanical uh, levers and belt clamps and so forth, so she's just opened up the inner hatch and the back hatch of the suit, and uh, we have these little ottomans that help you suit now. This suit's actually a little big for her, but uh, better too big than too small, I guess. So she's already in the suit, you know, we're looking at about 30 seconds, and we've learned that. And we're already thinking ahead to the next generation where we'll probably use electric actuators rather than just simple mechanical actuators. And uh, if you look at the EVA paradigm, with one airlock, you want that hatch to be as simple as it possibly can. The uh, folks that are architecting our return to the moon really see this small pressurized rover as a concept that's really going to make crew much more productive. It's going to expand their ability to do work on the moon. It really is an honor for our team to be selected by NASA to really represent the agency. Um, the kind of work we're doing is, I think, important as not just we go into space, but here in the United States. We're looking at electric vehicles, and I think the uh, work we're doing here is going to transfer back to industry and benefit all Americans. This is a tremendous honor, actually. You know, this is a first for us, this, this whole team. So we're, we're incredibly excited to be here. Um, the fact that uh, we, we get to participate in, in just, in my opinion, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity is just beyond imagination. So we, we are all excited. As, as one of our engineers always says, we're pumped. He's just, he's all worked up. So we like that. Discovery of methane reveals Mars is not a dead planet. A team of NASA and university scientists has achieved the first definitive detection of methane in the atmosphere of Mars. This indicates the planet is either biologically or geologically active. The team used spectrometer instruments attached to several telescopes to make the detection. Although nothing conclusive can yet be determined, it is possible that the detective methane was either produced by geologic processes, such as the oxidation of iron or, or serpentinization, or by microscopic marsh.